Talking about mindset can feel really cliche sometimes, but that's only because it's true. If you don't believe you can, then you won't. But a lot of mindset advice can be like really wishy-washy and kind of ethereal. So I'm going to give you very actionable advice that helps shift my financial future forever. So the first thing is setting the right goal, because if we make that first one too big, it's going to actually demotivate us. So if you have zero dollars in your bank account, your goal is not to become a millionaire. It's not to even become a hundred thousand air, make it $10,000. Then once you've hit $10,000 and you're feeling that momentum, don't go and make it a million, make it $25,000, then make it $50,000, then make it a hundred thousand dollars. Do not skip this step and get overly optimistic. You will only lose focus and demotivate yourself. The next thing to do is to define your why. This journey is going to require sacrifice because anything worth having is worth working really hard for. And in order to get what you really want, you're going to have to make trade-offs and sacrifices on this journey. But the thing is, comfort has a really strong call and it makes it really easy for us to go back to our old ways when things start to get hard. Defining a why statement, which is just like a sentence, you know, it's the equivalent of a mission statement that you would make for a business or something, is great to use as a mantra whenever you're reaching a point of resistance and you want to go back to the comfortable old ways and then you just repeat to yourself, no, this is why I am doing what I am doing and it helps keep you on the path and moving forward. And remember to keep it simple. A why statement should be something you should just be able to roll off your tongue and it shouldn't change that often. It's really just a North Star that's filled with your values to keep you on track. So like right now, mine is to glorify God, love my family, serve others, and have fun while doing it. Anything that I'm doing, I wanna make sure it's fulfilling those four criteria, and that's my why statement. This next one is gonna be a little unconventional, but I mean it. I want you to get angry. Channel that inner Hulk. When you're thinking about why you're doing all this stuff, I also want you to think about the things in your current situation that really are a problem and make you angry. Can't go on vacations, can't buy the things that I want, can't move into a neighborhood that's safer for the kids, can't go to sleep at night because I'm so stressed out about money. Whatever those things are, remember them. The reason for this is because anger is the best emotion when it comes to creating change. And that's ultimately what we're trying to do. This next part of the mindset is incredibly important. You have to believe it. 65% of millionaires starting at zero had no inheritance. That's really good odds for you. But if you don't believe it's possible, then it's not. One of the big problems that people make right at the beginning of their journey is they set unrealistic goals. And when you do that, what it ends up doing is taking your focus off of it and it demotivates you instead of motivating you because you just have a hard time believing that it's true and it's like climbing a mountain and just staring up at the top the entire time, the journey just feels incredibly daunting when we start off like that. So there's three things about financial goals when you're starting at zero that I want you to pay attention to. The first thing is that I want you to be optimistic, but realistic. The best investors have some level of optimism to them. Now, when I say optimistic, I don't mean having some blinding, sunny, everything's roses and rainbows outlook on everything that you're looking at. But I also don't mean that I want you to be a pessimist because pessimists struggle with finding opportunities because they always find something wrong in everything that they do and can normally talk them out of something even if it's a good opportunity. This next one is kind of a big deal, especially if you haven't been investing much, but I want you to totally forget about earning 7% in the market. When you're starting at zero, you're not going to be able to do a lot of investing. But when you are, you need to understand that you need to separate your investments between short term and long term. To build wealth quickly, you're going to need a balance of both. But since we're starting at zero, we have to get rid of this 7% trope that people love to throw around, which is just kind of a conservative estimate of what the market is going to do over time. I know I just said you need to be a nice mix between realistic and optimistic. So this next one is going to sound a little weird, but I'll explain it. But you need to forget about the 7% and we need to start focusing on how to make 1000% returns and more. So to earn 1000%, most people have to unlearn most of what they've learned about investing. When you're starting at zero, take it from me, you are just not going to earn a lot of your wealth through stocks or crypto. 
Think about it like this. If you invest $1,000 and let's say in a year you get an insane return on something like 50%. I mean, that's really, really good. You still only earned $500 and then you're going to lose some of that to taxes. So when we rethink what investing is a little bit and just think about it as where we are putting our time, energy, and money, now we can get away from just the standard putting our money into things like stocks and mutual funds and focus on where else we can earn higher returns in a short period of time. So instead, let's take that $1,000 that we would have put into the stock market and let's start putting it into other things. For instance, getting training on a skill that you already have in order to earn more money on your primary income. This is something that's called upskilling. You can look at your local markets and start flipping items like furniture or power tools, even sneakers. Another one is to start a low entry weekend side hustle, doing different things like mowing lawns, pressure washing, organizing people's garages, cleaning houses, doing car detailing. So I know you're probably thinking, Stephen, what does this have to do with investing? You're just talking about getting more work. I understand that. But every time we do anything with time, energy or money, that is an investment in something. When you sit down to watch Netflix at night, you have invested $25 a month to be entertained and you are investing an hour to two hours to watch some TV shows or movies and your return on that investment is hopefully some form of relaxation. So let's go back to that $1,000 that we could have put in stocks and instead let's put it into some kind of side hustle. Let's say we do $300 for equipment and chemicals or anything else that you might need for this particular side hustle. And then we spend $100 to pay a friend with a really nice camera to do a fancy headshot of us. We make a nice LinkedIn profile and we make a really good looking Facebook page and all of that costs zero. So now we're all in at $400. With all of those side hustles I just mentioned, you can easily get started for $300 or less with most of them. And for each job you do, you could probably charge anywhere from $50 to $1,000 per job. So now think about it like this. Most of these jobs are only going to take you maybe two to three hours to do on a weekend. So it's not a lot of time. You still have plenty of time to go have fun, do all this other stuff. If you average just three jobs per week, and let's say it's an average of $250 a job, that works out to be $9,000 extra for the year. On that initial $400 that we use to get this started, that is a 2,250% return on that investment. The velocity of money is a really important concept to learn. It's not just about making money, but it's about how much money you can make in the shortest amount of time possible. The shorter time frame that you can use to make more money is how you build wealth the fastest. There's one more crucial piece of advice that I want you to add to your mindset, and I save this for last for a reason, but you have to be thinking the entire time, I will not increase my lifestyle right now. You have to drill that into your head. Otherwise, none of this is going to work. The reason most people never reach $100,000 net worth or have more than $500 even in their bank account normally doesn't have as much to do with how much income they have. It has more to do with the fact that they are outspending that income. Set your mind to focus on the fact that the change that we are looking for is not about material possessions and the number in our bank account. What it's really about is having more time, more freedom, more opportunity, and just increasing our overall well being and enjoying life. Okay, if you want to get serious about your financial journey, then there's one thing that you have to do right now, or just admit to yourself that you are not serious about your financial journey. I want you to get a pen and a piece of paper, and I want you to write down two things. I want you to write down your goals, and I want you to write down the why statement that you came up with. If you do this, you will increase your chances of success by 40%. It's crazy. There's nothing so simple that can increase your chances of success at anything as that. So if you're not willing to do that, then you just have to admit you're not serious about this. So write those things down and then put that piece of paper somewhere like in your car or in your bathroom where you're gonna see it often. 